Say hello to the new SwimOutlet.com. Enhanced navigation, larger, higher resolution imagery, more filtering and search capability so you can find what you need faster. As always, low price guarantee and free shipping on $49. The redesigned SwimOutlet.com. Dive in, say hi. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, June 25th, 2014. On yesterday's show, we learned about the Springfield YMCA team in Illinois, and today we'll talk to two of the coaches in the Finise Monitor from the Springfield YMCA team in Ohio. The team boasts an impressive list of alumni, including NCAA champion Margot Gear, and the team is working toward producing more notable names. And one of those names is also joining us today, Justin Crew. So let's bring them all now in via Skype from Springfield, Ohio. Hey guys, great to see you. How are you today? Good, thanks. Okay, Jeff. How are you? All right, so John Bishop, head coach, Mickey McNeil, assistant coach. You guys have been part of this team for more than 20 years. Um, how has the team changed, or I guess evolved is a better word, in, in those years? Um, we go back even longer than that. We both participated for SPY. Uh, so we go really 35 years, and we've seen it grow from uh, 60 kids all the way up to 180 kids. Um, starting off with just like the A-level swimmers, and we've taken them to Olympic trials where they were also four-time uh, YMCA national champions um, of that caliber. Wow, it's really remarkable to see it's changed so much. Mickey, what do you... What do you think has been the biggest key for your team to continue to grow every year? Um, we have a good coaching staff, and the fact that probably because John and I have been together so long, we uh, communicate really well, both working with the younger levels as well as our elite athletes. So everyone is valuable to us, no matter what you're coming into the program, and we set goals. So those goals for us and the swimmers just help us keep accelerating further. How often does the entire coaching staff get together and meet? Um, well, we're probably together. It's, we're kind of unique. Um, even though I'm an age group coach, I help at the senior level with John, and John ends up helping with the age group level. So you know, we're kind of like together a lot. We meet several times, and, uh, and when we're not together, we're all always texting or sending us messages to each other about different ideas to do. So. It's, it's kind of like a marriage. <laughs> it's a, a multiple first spouse marriage, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, Justin, uh, tell us how long you've been a part of this swim team. Uh, I'm, this is actually my 12th year, and I've been doing it, it feels like, all my life. Well, 12th year, how old are you? Uh, I'm just turned 17. All so. right, so it sounds like you, you learned to swim with these guys, and you stuck with it. What, is, what have you liked about being a part of this team? I just love the, the family environment that these two coaches have created for us. And it's just, it's like a second home at the, at the Y and just love being with people, people at the Y and spending time in the pool together. Well, Rob, at the start of the show, I mentioned uh, one of the famous people that have come through the program, Margot Gear. Uh, tell us about her evolution from, you know, very young preteen to YMCA national champion, and then seeing her now doing so well, just finishing up her college career as NCAA champion. Well, as a youngster, she was a standout from the beginning, but she was always wanting more, always watching what the older elite swimmers were doing and wanting to copy what they were doing. And I give her credit for not just swimming and thinking about her races, but watching what the Ginny Foresters and some of those girls did before her to kind of set down the groundwork and let her see that those kind of goals were um, definitely something she could accomplish. And then uh, last month she came back home to, to visit and talk with the team. Mickey, I'm sure the kids got a big thrill out of that. Yeah, um, she's one of many. Actually, Justin's sister also did that too. She's swimming for University of Kentucky, but um, Margo has come back more than once and, and actually she volunteered. It wasn't like we asked her and came in and talked to kids about goals and what they asked her questions and she actually got in the pool and swam with them. Um, 
I mean, as soon as she's done with her swimming career, she's going to be one excellent coach. I can tell you that for sure. Her eye for swimming and technique, um, doesn't matter what level you're at, she is just on top of it. Justin, how does seeing someone like Margot Gear, uh, you know, standing at the top of the podium at the NCAAs, how does that motivate you on a daily basis? Oh, it's, it's all my motivation just to know that someone can come out of such a small program like us and excel at what we do. And it's just, it means a lot. Well, um, 180 kids is a lot of swimmers to have on a team. Um, how do you make sure everybody gets in adequate pool space to be able to train effectively, Rob, John? Well, that's definitely a juggling act. Um, in the summertime, it's a little bit easier because we have some outdoor satellite pools that we also use. In the wintertime, we've got to be creative where um, just changing some things up in practice so we can squeeze it all in. <laughs> So I'm sure, Justin, it gets pretty crowded in there. Um, you know, tell us about a, a set that you've done recently that you say you, you maybe enjoy doing. <laughs> well, I kind of like the painful sets. Uh, I'm a distance guy, so uh, we always, somehow we end up in the outside lanes, and it's fun because uh, we get to do uh, like 10 100s on a, on a 110 cycle, and it's just, it's fun for me. I, I love it. You just love churning out the yards and just pretty much going nonstop for two hours. Yeah. You just, I'm sure, I'm sure John and Mickey are just like, we love having kids like this. I mean, what, <laughs> this, I yes. mean, I, obviously Justin's, you know, probably just one of many kids on the team that, that likes doing that. But there are swimmers on your team, like every team, who come in, you know, they don't want to swim, they don't want to put in the, the training, but they do it, be, well, you know, for whatever reason. How do you get those kids motivated to, to be able to um, eventually get to, to be swimmers like Justin? Well, we may remind them about their goals or remind them about a performance that wasn't oh so hot and let them know that we know that they've got it in them. And usually that's enough to kind of pick them up in practice. Um, you know, it may be a... If it's extreme, we may have to talk to them after practice and say, hey, maybe you had a bad night. Let's uh, pick it up for tomorrow night, something like that. Yeah. Well, there are a couple other swimmers there. I know who, uh, you know, obviously train very well. Uh, Matt Pettit and Trevor Cariazzi's, uh, they swam at Wide Nationals, did very well, got some second swims. Uh, how would you grade their performances this past spring? <laughs> Uh, sometimes the kids make so well, and the last week of the season, they're still dropping tons of time. So I was very impressed. I think they had a lot of motivation to do to do real well there, though. Well, obviously, and it's you know the end of the season. I mean, how do you, um, how does this kind of springboard into the summer? How do you, what's the outlook for this summer season? I kind of look at it as um, kind of a stepping stone where we're really trying to to get our numbers going and, and do some recruiting. Uh, the kids that we've had in the water so far have done some great training, but we definitely need to add to the numbers to, to keep the team pushing forward. Well, I spoke to uh, the head coach from the Springfield YMCA team in Springfield, Ohio, for yesterday's show, and I brought up something interesting. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. I thought it'd be great to have a dual meet between the two of you to see who's the best Springfield YMCA team. I mean, they're not too far away. I mean, it's, it's a good drive, but, you know, Rob, Mickey, Justin, what do you guys think about that? That's uh, John. Um, John, yeah, sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, they're a pretty talented team. Uh, there's years where I think we could take them, and there's years where they can take us, so... You know, I think it's good that maybe we could push each other that way. We're right. probably eight, ten hours away. We could probably do a virtual meet. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. Outside, do something outside of Nationals. I think it would. I think that would be a fun meet to have. You know, who's the best Springfield Y team in the country? Like you yeah. said, one year you can win, one year they'd win. I mean, it would, probably some years it'd be decided in the last race. Yeah. I think those would be fun events to have. Well, I know there's a lot to do before you get, uh, you know, the championship season's coming up pretty soon. But before we let you guys go, we want to submit you to our final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the Morning Swim Show. Justin, as the swimmer, I'm going to ask you this first question. If you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? 
Uh, I think I'd flip the backstroke and breaststroke and just go fly, breast, back, free. Okay. Um, Mickey, what's a um, career or job you would most like to try? Uh, I probably somehow would still be working with kids. I did have my degree in education, so I probably would stay in some sort of youth development type program or confidence building type program. Okay. And John, what's a career or job you would not like to try? Uh, probably anything outdoors in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially after this past winter. Yeah. yeah. Justin, what's a, sw a rule in the swimming rule book that you would like to see changed or added? Um, I guess just get rid of the 15 meter line. Well, you're a distance swimmer. You don't really have to worry about that too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a lot of good kicker, good kickers on our team, and I know they'd enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, last questions for all three of you. We'll start with Mickey. Where's the place you'd like to go most for vacation? Um, my vacations are always active, so I would have to do something with hiking or biking, but I always have this dream of doing the Appalachian Trail someday, so that would probably be it. Nice. How about you, John? Uh, I'm probably down to Florida to see my mom. Good. And Justin, where would you like to go? Uh, California. A very nice place to go. Any northern, southern? Uh, probably towards LA. Okay. Plenty of stuff to do down there. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, congratulations on a great short course season. Looking forward to seeing how you do long course. Thank you. Thank you. Us. All right. And thanks to you as well for joining us on today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. We'll be back tomorrow with another exciting episode, and we hope you'll join us. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.